So in this video, what I would like to do is give an overview of linked lists, how they work, and talk about how to implement them. Now, the intention of this video is to be very general, so it's not going to be focused on Java or C, but in a few cases, we will touch on things specifically related to implementing linked lists in one of those languages. There's all sorts of linked data structures. So we can have linked lists and doubly linked lists, which are linear data structures, where there's some first thing, then another thing, then another thing, and so forth. We can also have nonlinear data structures like trees and graphs, where there's really no notion of this is the first one, this is the next one. So our focus in this video is going to be on linked lists, which are linear linked structures. Now, one issue with this particular image, we're going to be storing data in this linked structure. Now, this shows just one thing that's linked to another to another. And I want to be clear that there's actually data stored at each of these nodes. But the nodes themselves don't have the references. So the way a linked list actually looks in our program would be something like this, where we have these five nodes. And each of those nodes has a reference or pointer to some data, as well as the next node in the list. And we'll touch more on that in a moment. So when we're going to, so implementing a linked list requires us to create some type of structure for these nodes. Again, these nodes are these structures right here, and they need to be able to access data and access the next node. What exactly that link is depends on the language you're using, and we'll actually talk about what that is in Java and C. Once we get to the end of the list, we're going to use a, a null value to indicate that there's no node. So in our example linked list here, you can see we're representing null with a small red square, meaning that the next node, once you get here, is null. There is no next node, so this is the end of the list. Now, I will say that this isn't necessarily ideal, and there's other ways to represent the end of the list so that you can avoid having null values in your code, but we won't be covering that in CSE 205 or CSE 240, so it's something that just keep in the back of your mind, but just know that in the future, it might be something to consider. Now, another important consideration is that we keep the data and the link to the next node separate. That's why I said we don't want our nodes in our list to look like this, where you just have one block pointing to another block. We're going to use this separate node structure so that we have our data completely separate. Notice in this case, the data doesn't know it's being stored in a linked list. Whereas here, if this was going to be actual data objects of some type, then it would have to have, in addition to whatever the structure of the data was, it would also have to have a reference to the next node. Here, we separate the data from the structure, and that allows us to use these linked lists more generically, as well as not adding irrelevant things to the data, such as a link to a next piece of data. Now, we want these links to be able to refer to different types of data. We don't want to have an integer linked list. We don't want to have a bank account linked list, and then we don't want to have to have a game character linked list. We want to have one linked list that we can put any type of data in. So in Java, we'll use generic references to handle this, and in C, we'll use void pointers. One final thing is, is when we're writing code that adds and removes or changes the list in some way, we want to make sure we don't lose those links to nodes that still exist in the list. This is the most common mistake that you can make when you're actually writing linked list code. So take care to always maintain a reference somewhere to every node in the list as you're making changes. And usually this means just be careful of the order you're updating references in your code. Okay, so in Java, our linked list structure is going to have a object reference variable referring to the data, and it'll have another reference to the next node in the list. So how that looks in code, we'll have a generic reference to some data, and then we'll have a reference to the next node. So there's two implementations in CSE 205. The first is the, in linklist.java. We have a private class for our list node, and you can see that it has an element reference and a reference to the next node. The JSJF package actually implements a separate linked node class, but you'll notice that class is pretty much the same, other than we call it a linear node instead of a list node, but actually how they're defined is, is essentially the same. Now in C, instead of references, we're going to have pointers to the data and the next node. So we'll have a void pointer to the data. And remember, as we're removing things from the list or get accessing this data somehow, we will need to cast that pointer to whatever type of pointer it's pointing to. 
And then we have a node T pointer that'll point to the actual next node. So if we look at our node structure, this is what it looks like. We have our void pointer to the data and we have a pointer to the node struct that we'll use to access the next node. So keep in mind though, at this point, we've only actually discussed implementing the nodes. We haven't talked about the list itself. So the simplest way to implement the list is to just keep track of a pointer to the first node in the list, because from there we can traverse to any node in the list. If we need to know the size, we traverse the list and count how many things are there, which granted it is not ideal. And one drawback to this is that if we want to get to the end of the list, we have to traverse the entire list. We'll see next that doing this differently, we can actually maintain a reference to that last node. So conceptually what this looks like, we have some reference or pointer to the list itself, and that's just a reference or pointer to the first item in the list. And then from there we can traverse through. So in our C code, what this looks like, we have a node T pointer that points to the first thing in the list. You could do something similar in Java where you had a list node pointer to the first thing. Now there's some drawbacks to doing it this way, because again, we're, we're constantly traversing the list to get information about the list. So another and, and really better approach is to have a separate linked list structure. And that structure is going to maintain references or pointers to the first and last node in the list, as well as the size. This allows us to instantly access the first node and the last node, which is helpful for adding things to the end. And then we can also keep the size updated as we modify the list. As we add and remove things, we can update that size so that we always have immediate access to the size. We don't have to traverse the list. So that's a nice advantage to this way as well. And again, this requires a second structure or class for the linked list. So that kind of structure looks something like this, where we have a structure with references to the size, front and rear. And again, keep in mind, I will use front and head and first interchangeably. I'll also use rear, tail, and last interchangeably. From the context, you should know what I mean. Different implementations refer to them in different ways. And so I kind of go back and forth and I won't be consistent, but I think it's pretty straightforward what I actually mean. So here you can see it looks a lot like what we had before, but now we have additional information directly from our actual reference to the linked list. Instead of just that reference being to the first node, we actually have some more information that we can use. And this gives us some flexibility, especially with our operations that we'll do later. So the Java code here for this looks something like this, where we have two list node references for the head and the tail, and then another entry for the size. So as we have these lists, we're going to want to be modifying them and updating them as we add and remove data from our linked list. Now I'm not going to go over the actual specific code for your class. There should be additional examples that do that here. I'm just going to talk about these operations at a very high level. It's also possible that we won't be covering all of these operations in detail in your class. However, it's a good idea to at least understand conceptually how they work. So the first operation we want to talk about is inserting a node. Now we can insert a node at the beginning of the list, at the end of the list or in the middle. And so we'll talk about all three of those cases because there's some slight differences. So if I want to insert a node at the front, notice the head reference is pointing to that first node. So what I need is for the head to point to this node. But if I do that now, notice there won't be a reference to the old head. And so I won't have access to any of these references except for the tail because there's no way to go back in a singly linked list. So what I want to do first is I want to set the next reference in my new node to the old head. Then I can safely set that head reference to the new node. Now, if I want to insert an interior node, meaning this isn't the first or the last node in the list, again, I can't just change this reference to point to the new node. I have to first point the new nodes next to the next of the previous node. Then I can update the previous nodes next to point to the new node. Notice that now we have this continuous set of links from one node to the other. Again, order is very important here. If you start seeing null references and that sort of thing, more than likely you're doing these things out of order. So finally, if we want to insert something at the rear, first we're going to set the old tails next to the new node, and then we're going to update the tail reference to point to the new node. So deleting is tends to be a little simpler, but you still have to be careful. So to delete the first node, and notice it's in red here, the node we're going to delete will be in red. I'm going to set the head to the next node. Now, in a language that's not garbage collected, 
I need to make sure I keep a reference here so that I can free that memory. In Java, you don't have to worry about that. The garbage collector will pick it up. If I have an interior node, the logic is pretty much the same. Set the previous nodes next to the node we're deleting's next, and then make sure we clean up the memory for that node if we need to. And if we want to delete the last node, first off, we have to find the next to last node. That's always going to require a traversal in a singly linked list because we have a reference to the last node, but there's no way to get from here to here. So here we'll have to start at the head, traverse all the way to the next to last node, and then we're going to set its next to null. And since it's the last node, we need to update the tail reference to point to the next to last node. That's the new last node. This will be garbage collected or in C or C++, we would need to make sure we handle that reference. So all the procedures that we talked about were for singly linked list. We could also have a doubly linked list, which gives us some advantages because we can move back and forth. We also have redundant references to everything. So it's a little harder to get yourself into trouble, but of course you still can if you remove all references to a node. You can update any of the procedures we talked about for singly linked lists to doubly linked lists by just keeping in mind that there's this previous reference that you have to handle as well. Also, the head's previous node would be null as well, just like the tail's next reference is null. So that's a quick introduction to linked lists and how they work at a conceptual basis. And so now make sure you look at the examples in the languages for your class.